An award-winning producer, best-selling author, he's been on Broadway, performed stand-up comedy for four U.S. presidents, guest starred with reoccurring role acting roles on network TV, performed solo television special events, and hosted and produced reality television. He's one of my favorite comedians. Craig Shoemaker is my special guest on this podcast. And listen in at the end of this interview for a limited time only special offer, 30% off for the best sleep ever, my Blankwell, the best weighted blanket in the world. He's back, shoe as he is called often, and also the love master, author, speaker, doctor, writer, actor, host. He's everything, two-time Emmy Award winner. Um, his performances are hilarious and sometimes shocking twists and turns of his own life. Welcome back to my show, Craig Shoemaker. You know, that's, it's a very nice introduction. They do that all the time. They give you the credits. I think they should give credits on how you became a comedian. What would lead you to this? <laughs> so, it maybe it should be his mother belly dances at his high school graduation party. His father's a cult leader running mule rides in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania. He was rejected by 13 girls at the prom, and Linda Scott, his date, made out with Ricky Alamere in the corner. But he's over it. Here he is. Craig Shoemaker. <laughs> That's actually better. Thank you. I'll, I'll change it to that. <laughs> no one's impressed with the other stuff. <laughs> oh, God, that's so funny. So how are you? How's the kids? Yeah, they're, they're good. They, they um, you know, I get these great welcomes when I go on stage. And, and then the kids, they give me a reception like I'm a bad contestant. And they're the judges on The Voice. You know, four chairs just turn around when I walk in and then I walk out of the room. So... They're all material, though. It's all material. Now, I'll give you an idea of my daughter, how I get received. She met a cat down the street, and my wife says, uh, she says to my wife, I want a cat. And she says, your dad's allergic. She says, let's just get another dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's Brutal. actually a good line. That was actually a good line. It hurt a little bit, but that's a good line. So for those who don't I... know, you have your, your children span in ages. You have a daughter, a young daughter, and three older boys. Yeah, I have a daughter. I'm trying to get in shape. shape so nobody says, hey, is that your granddaughter? So I went from my first run in years about two blocks in until it pulls the carver and yells out, are you okay? <laughs> I got in. <laughs> that must make for a lot of uh, your act then, I guess, now, right? Well, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stuff about, uh, you know, they, they are of a different generation. And, the, you know, with the, uh, 75 bucks for a game, we played games and cost our parents anything, right? We, we played tag. It's like, how about that, kid? You have a hand and you tag. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> they, they have no patience. I was, a, I was a hide and go seek. I go, ready or not, here I come. And the kid goes, here I am. He's hiding behind a wire. How'd you find me? <laughs> the other kid texted me, I'm behind the couch. The texting. I found the other on Insta I found the other one on Instagram. There's a photo, hashtag, under the bed. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to go old school with them, and I got the pogo stick. And I got, that, that didn't go over. They're, they're, like, looking for a button and batteries. I said, no, here's how you do it. I, I showed them, and I haven't done it since I was age and weight appropriate. I was 6th grade, 70 pounds. Now I'm a 210-pound middle-aged man. I bounce this thing. I bottomed out. I turned it into a jackhammer. <laughs> <laughs> I put a hole in our driveway. My middle-aged breasts are hitting me in my face. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it wasn't a pretty sight. <laughs> the kids nowadays, so different from how we grew up, right? Oh, my God. I, I, I know. I mean, my son graduates high school. He goes to Europe for three and a half weeks. I, I went to the Jersey Shore for a night, and I slept on a tire when I graduated. And he's FaceTiming. He's dead. What's up? I'm on a nude beach in France. I'm, I'm sitting there going, well, move your head. See the head all the time. Let me see what I paid for. <laughs> Oh my God! And the, the, in the social media—do they kill you for that? My kids make fun of me all the time. Yes, yes. Uh, my son actually said these words. He goes, "Dad, you have more followers, but you tweet like a mom." <laughs> he said, "Nobody wants to see pictures of your kids." <laughs> I got forty thousand followers. He goes, "You have way more." <laughs> <laughs> if you don't show your stop kids. posting pictures, that's because he doesn't want pictures of him up there. He just didn't like I. I I tweeted that, I said, if you want your car, you got to help me. 
and I did an advertisement for um, working in NIAC, you know, and right. I made, because ventriloquists make all the money. Right? They made $40 million, Jeff Dunham. So I said, you're going to be my ventriloquist dummy. And I said, every time I press you in the back, just open your mouth. <laughs> so, so we did a ventriloquist act. I was like, oh, I'm fighting in West Niac, New York. And, you know, I was doing the thing with the lips and his, his lips were moving. But he goes, he goes, you can only put it on Facebook because that's for old people. I don't care. <laughs> that's so... I put it on, I put it on Instagram. He was furious. Take it down. <laughs> I don't even, can't even... Put Got all the answers it's... except for paying bills. It's... And then, then I have to have the answers. It's crazy, Craig. I can't even put my kids on Facebook anymore because now they're on Facebook. It's so annoying, these kids. Are they really? They're on Facebook. Yeah. Well, he might be, but he, he's blocking me if he is on Facebook. Right. We're so uncool. <laughs> Parents are so uncool. If you just turned it, I'm talking to Craig Shoemaker. Are they still calling you the love master? And can you please do something, say something, talk like that? Sure. I'm the, I'll always be the love master because... The good news on that is I can write new lines all the time. It's like it's, it's like a best of. Like Springsteen can't all of a sudden change. Hey, baby, I'm born to trot. I'm born to jog. You know, he has, right. to, do, he has to do the same lines. The love master I can do. Uh, you know, <laughs> he channels through me. Uh, uh, you know how where he came from. It's it's girls like you would treat me terrible in high school they'd all use the f word you know friend i was always the friend and they'd talk about these hot guys they're always bad guys uh, and then, so i was like oh, yeah i'll fix you up with them i had a little high voice i'm thinking oh give the geek a chance baby love master i love you so good you'll be begging like pbs on a pledge drive baby oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> it gets me every time when you talk like that <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know. Well, but, but if I know now. I know you're not under twenty. You're under twenty. Ew, ew. Just twenty one. Just oh, twenty one, yeah. for the record. And so, Bruce Springsteen is he still your idol in comedy? Yeah, I love Bruce too, and I still I still haven't met him. I've met everybody else with the band and everything, and. But I've never met. Uh, I've never met the boss. Read his, just read his biography, and yeah, he changed my life. When I saw him perform, I said, "That's what I want to do on stage." And I do a longer show than most comedians, and I tell the truth, bring it from the heels, and just to give them everything. I remember watching him many years ago when I was a kid, and I, I said, "Oh my, wow!" He, I could tell, still tell you the stories that he told. You know, between the songs, you know, about breaking in the Graceland at Elvis's Graceland and stuff like that. And when you tell personal stories like that, people remember it more than they do a joke or just something about some somebody else. It's like when you talk about yourself, people relate to it, and that's what comedy is. I don't want to give the secrets away. No, I'm don't give the secrets. Don't. That's, <laughs> that's one thing I love about you, for real. You're a storyteller. And that's what yeah. you do when you're on stage. And I think that's why people relate to you because what, every single one of your stories has been in one of our lives. Like we're talking about social media earlier. Like it's, we all have that issue with our kids. So, but whatever topic you talk about, especially now with your kids, you know, three boys and a girl in the, the age range, we all relate to something or another. I'm glad you got my name right, by the way. People go, Mr. Schumacher, I would say, when I check in the hotel, it's Schumacher, not Schumacher. You make shoes, you don't mock shoes. We talked about uh, that. Except for, except for Crocs, those you can mock. We talked about that last time around the show. I was like, oh, who mess? I mess up everybody's name. I didn't mess up your name. Like, who messes up your name? I know you did. I, I don't know. I said, uh, I don't know. I don't understand now how you make that into a mocker. But, and then they say, Oh, the love maker. That's another one. They get oh, that God. right. They get the maker right on the love maker. I said, I can make love, though, baby. Yeah, I love you so good. Your neighbor will have a smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I got them both right. This is like a win for me. 
I have uh, some yeah, you got celebrity win names. I can't even remember who, but I remember when um, Coach K was on, I must have rehearsed his last name a hundred times. God forbid I, my son's a basketball <laughs> player. I messed up his name. But I've messed up people's names. They've never, they don't correct me, which is the, we laugh about that all the time on my show. So it, comedy, oh, they just let it slide. They let it slide. I guess they're, they're being yeah. nice. So comedy is taking a different direction these days, kind of, because everything you say probably is taboo now because God forbid we say anything, right? Yeah, I actually had someone the other day come up. Uh, I do some, you know, all this stuff. It, I usually don't have too many complaints because if you do share your personal experiences, nobody can go, hey, I disagree with that. You can't disagree with it because it happened. Right. You know what I mean? So um, it, it, people are so sensitive. But you know what just kills me is like there's, so, you know, you can't talk about politics and religion. Somebody made that rule. And I would say, well, if you have such belief in your policies and politics or such belief in your religion, then how can my words of a joke throw you off your axis? I, I you know, if you, then therefore you must not believe it. Right. <laughs> because if I can point it out on stage as a joke and mess with you, then you really don't believe it. And, uh, you know, the, the, they don't know what to say to that. You know, because I say, if you have faith, you have faith. So let's have some fun. I don't understand why you can't talk. I, now, I don't talk about those things. But I would if I had, like, experiences or if I came up with jokes about it. You know, I do have one, uh, but nobody understands the joke. I say I was raised, um, it's a true story, though. So I was raised uh, Jewish and Protestant. So we would have Easter and Passover the same week, and it was very confusing. And I'd say, is the empty chair for Elijah or Uncle Ray today? (laughs) Now, only Jews get the joke. (laughs) Don't think that they know about the empty chair. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's the only religious joke that I hardly ever tell it. uh, But, but, again, that's like... You know, it's just a fact that that's what happens at the at Passover and blah blah blah. And so, if people can relate to the things you know that go on in my life, that's what I depend on. You know, and instead of uh, I'm not just joking in the politics. Now, I do on Facebook, <laughs> so, but people go, I I pay to see you do comedy, not this. I was like, well, you're not paying on Facebook. I can say whatever I want. All right, idiot. That's right. People don't like to be challenged. Once they get a belief, they do not want to be challenged. Amazing. So, yeah, I know. I just, I just, I can't believe what's going on. But anyway, I'm on tour now. Make America laugh again. That's what I'm doing. And laughter. <laughs> you need to... Let's talk about laughter. Yeah. It's the best medicine you can get. And it's free. Yeah it, yeah, it oxygenates your body. Healing endorphins are released. Stress is relieved. You know, I, Norman Cousins cured himself of a terminal disease just through laughter, which makes me a doctor. Y- yes. Yeah, open up and say hi for the love, master. I got your tongue depressor, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, it, I mean, when you think about it, it's a pharmacy within our system. Within our, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's amazing to me. It helps your circulatory system, your heart, your mind. Everything is helped through laughter. But the drug companies who own Washington, they see to it that nobody understands that because that would be a threat to them. Right. You can't be depressed at the same time you're laughing. So just go to a comedy club. It's like twenty buck copay. <laughs> That's right. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> And there's your health. There's your health right there. You That's cannot funny. be sick while you're laughing. That's it, right. it, it, they can't exist in the same space. I mean, it's amazing to me how more people don't get that. But they silence. The FDA passes every drug law. You know, they, they bribe their way in. But there's no laughter lobby in Washington. You know, Levity Live's not, you know, talking to Congress. You know, it's, it's amazing. So they shut us up with the FCC, like language. And, you know, in the meantime, they say, oh, it's about the kids. Say, if it's about the kids, then what are they seeing on TV if it's sponsored? Right. Rape, molestation, schoolyard shootings. You think I'm going to F them up with an F-bomb? Right. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's crazy to me. So they shut the comedians out because we tell the truth. And we, and we use language that might be salty for someone. But thank God for Trump in that respect because now that he's calling countries... You know, I just love it. I just love that uh, 
three of the newscasters use the S word. <laughs> Makes me laugh <laughs> because they're quoting them. So that's okay. But if a comedian says it, or if I talk about an erection, oh, no good. But but meantime, I'm watching TV and a commercial comes on. Do you have uh, erectile dysfunction? And then my son goes, do you, Dad? I was like, thanks for the Hallmark moment, Viagra. Oh, okay. <laughs> How many boner pills do they have now? You get the Levitius, the Hallmark. It's all right to talk about that. Oh. Uh